Hi, in this video I will describe stellar evolution, that is how a star changes as its life comes to an end. First, let's consider a star with a mass no more than four times that of the Sun. In the core of a main sequence star, hydrogen is fusing into helium, releasing energy as it does so. When the hydrogen in the core runs out, fusion will stop and there will no longer be any gas pressure available to prevent the star from collapsing. This sudden collapse will increase the core's temperature so much that helium fusion can take place, producing heavier elements such as carbon, oxygen, silicon and iron. The energy generated from this new round of nuclear fusion will cause the star to expand massively. Although it is generating more power than previously, this is spread over a much bigger area, so the surface temperature is lower, producing red light. The star is now a red giant. This will happen to our Sun in about 5 billion years. When it does, it will engulf Mercury and Venus and it will almost reach the surface of the Earth. Whatever life forms may still be around by that point will be finally extinguished, which is a cheery thought. What happens next in the evolution of a small or medium sized star like our Sun? A red giant will fuse heavier and heavier elements until it reaches iron. Iron has got one of the highest binding energies per nucleon. If you want to fuse it into heavier elements, you have to put in more energy than the reaction will release. The red giant cannot provide this, so fusion stops again, and once more, a lack of outward gas pressure will cause the star to collapse. The tenuous, relatively cool outer gas of the star will drift into space as a planetary nebula. Note that planetary nebulae are nothing to do with planets, it's an erroneous historical name that's stuck. If the remaining core of the star has a mass no more than 1.4 times the mass of the Sun, uh, and this corresponds to an original star uh, with a mass less than four times that of the Sun, it will become a white dwarf. This limit is known as the Chandrasekhar limit, and is because below this limit, the electron degeneracy pressure prevents further star collapse. The white dwarf is very hot, hence its colour, but it is no longer fusing. It will slowly fade for eternity like the dying embers of a fire until eventually it becomes invisible. But what happens to larger stars? Stars with a remnant mass above the Chandrasekhar limit, or the original mass that's more than four times the mass of the Sun. Well, their evolution is slightly different. Similar to low mass stars, their core will collapse and they'll begin fusing heavier elements, but they'll expand into much larger stars called red supergiants. These can be up to a thousand times the diameter of the Sun. When a red giant finally runs out of fusible material, it will also collapse, but the energy available in this collapse will be so great that even the electron degeneracy pressure of the core cannot prevent further collapse. This causes a supernova, an enormous release of energy which can briefly outshine the hundred billion other stars in the galaxy. A supernova is hot enough to fuse iron into even heavier elements. The fact that these elements are found in our bodies and on the Earth mean that we are made of the remnants of a supernova that happened somewhere in the, this region of the universe long before the formation of our Sun and the planets. We are quite literally made of stardust. Unless the original star was exceptionally massive, the remnants of the supernova will form a neutron star. A neutron star has collapsed to such an extent that all of the empty space from the atoms has been squeezed out, leaving only the nucleons behind. The density of a neutron star is tremendous. One teaspoon of neutron star material has got roughly the same mass as the combined mass of every human on Earth. The neutron star is prevented from collapsing any further by the neutron degeneracy pressure. However, if the star's remnant is more than around two to three solar masses, even this neutron degeneracy pressure is not enough to prevent total collapse. Stars above this limit, which is called the Oppenheimer-Volkoff limit, will collapse into black holes. The density of a black hole is so high that it has gravitational effects that prevent even light from escaping. Okay, let's summarize this journey. A low mass star, that is one below the Chandrasekhar limit, will continue to fuse hydrogen into helium until it's run out of hydrogen. At that point it will collapse, 
and then expand to form a red giant, where the core is hot enough to fuse helium into heavier elements, such as carbon and oxygen. Eventually, once the fusion process reaches iron, no more fusion can take place, so the core will collapse into a white dwarf, and the outer layers will gently drift off into space as planetary nebula. For high mass stars, that is those above the Chandrasekhar limit, they will expand to form red supergiants. And again, red supergiants will fuse helium into heavier elements all the way up to iron. Once they run out of fuel, they will collapse with so much energy that a supernova is triggered. Usually, a neutron star is left behind after this. This is an incredibly dense star that would collapse further if it wasn't for its neutron degeneracy pressure. However, for heavier remnants, those above the Oppenheimer Volkov limit, even the neutron degeneracy pressure is not enough to prevent further collapse, so the remnant collapses into a black hole. Finally, let's take a look at how these evolutionary paths would look on a Hertzsprung Russell diagram. It's important to recognise that stars do not move along the main sequence. When they're on the main sequence, they have a fixed position. When a low mass star becomes a red giant, it moves up and to the right, indicating that its power output is increasing, but its temperature is decreasing. After shedding its outer layers as a planetary nebula, it moves around to the bottom left of the diagram, where the remaining core is very hot, but the star itself is small and relatively dim. Similarly, for a high mass star, which will start from higher up in the main sequence, it will move up and to the right to become a red supergiant. It will then move off the top of the chart as it becomes a supernova. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe, and visit cowanphysics.com.